Okay. Um, next up is Damon Zuka from Oxford University Press. Uh, Damon is the reference and online publisher. Um, I know he's doing a lot to turn um, Oxford's sort of very lengthy list of these great big books and reference products into these forward-looking um, electronic products. Um, and he's going to um, talk in particular about something called the Oxford Index, which is a, a, a metadata catalog really meant to encompass a very diverse set of works from a publisher that's been active for over 500 years. So. Thank you, David. Great. Uh, hello, um, Damon Zuka. I'm the, um, as David said, the publisher for scholarly and online reference at Oxford University Press. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Oxford Index today, something that uh, a project I have not had a lead role in, but one that uh, I'm a huge fan of within OUP <laughs> and I think is uh, an essential next step in our digital publishing uh, across the board. It's particularly important for our reference publishing, which is now primarily digital with some opportunistic uh, work in print. Uh, and so um, I'll try not to make this a uh, advertisement for the index, um, but uh, I'm excited about it, so I will be extolling some of uh, what I perceive to be its virtues. Um, Inevitably, we refer to it at Oxford as uh, the OI, and so um, I may slip into that as well, um, Oxford Index. Uh, in any case, I'll find no argument here. I'm sure that uh, site traffic and usage are um, the lifeblood of digital scholarship. From uh, the editorial perspective, this, uh, these um, uh, activities show the value of our content, and it's helping us to understand users' behavior uh, and the way research practices are changing, which are crucial for us um, in our interaction with authors and the kinds of materials that we are um, uh, publishing and how we're working to make that material available. And so um, what the OI helps us see is how people are interacting with Oxford's publishing, and it's uh, useful to know that. The Oxford Index is actually two uh, projects at once. First and uh, most important is a data standardization project. Um, this is a multi-year effort to uh, organize the underlying metadata for everything we uh, publish online from journal articles to reference entries to book chapters, uh, timelines, and so on. Um, and we're trying to create a consistent set of data so that we are able to interact more smoothly with discovery services and so that we can create more seamless links between our own online publishing, which has developed over time so that we have separate, uh, almost autonomously functioning uh, online databases. The journals are here, the monographs are in Oxford Scholarship Online, and we haven't had a lot of good communication between uh, those projects, uh, those uh, the material there, and so this is helping to stitch it together. The um, first and most visible manifestation of this uh, major data organization project has been the Oxford Index, uh, which is a um, interface with that metadata hub. It's free online. It's a sort of virtual platform that spans across the digital publishing we do that allows for um, uh, people to search across all of OUP's data. It allows for us to create links between that material and um, make all of what we're publishing more discoverable from the web, more discoverable, discoverable from within each of these individual publishing uh, databases, and um, uh, which I'll talk about some more now in detail. Um, some reasons for why we created it. I mean, obviously, this uh, the main one of the main factors is uh, improved discoverability and uh, usage. For one thing, the um, the OI serves as a sort of um, super sitemap across all of OUP's publishing, which um, can be crawled by Google and will help us, um, our material show up more frequently in uh, search results. Um, it creates a landing page for every piece of content that Oxford publishes. And so uh, we've had within one our reference database a landing page on the free web for um, something like the Oxford Dictionary of Byzantium, 
What we hadn't had in the past, though, were uh, landing pages for each of the individual entries that are in that. And so what this does is gets beneath our publishing to create those sort of landing pages for every chapter, every entry, uh, and um, the full set of material that we have. And uh, we've created one of the things we've been able to do by um, uh, unpacking, analyzing, and creating a consistent data set is provide overview pages, um, which offer a clean link into a search term. So, for instance, if uh, you enter into the OI because you've searched for John Adams, uh, we can disambigu disambiguate that search result and say, are you looking for John Adams, the founding father, or the contemporary composer, and lead you right into a uh, user into the um, content uh, on the appropriate uh, term. And uh, importantly, the uh, OI has given us an evolving grid of options to connect to our content across the vi um, various publishing programs that we have. And so if you're in Oxford Journals, you can uh, search for um, other journal articles that have been published by the same author. What the OI allows us to do is you can do a search for everything that that author has published um, uh, at OUP in all its different forms. So an encyclopedia entry here, um, a journal article here, contributed a chapter to a, a book there. Um, it allows us to uh, let users search by content type. So uh, they've entered into the Oxford's um, universe of content and, and perhaps they want a biography or a bibliography. Um, those choices can be sorted. And uh, we've created a single taxonomy that, um, a subject taxonomy that organizes our publishing. I have to say from the editorial perspective, creating one taxonomy that um, everything we publish falls under, under is a very fraught process that makes editors very nervous, but we've done it and uh, it allows for sorting and browsing of our content. And last, we've been able to, we will be instituting what we're calling an underbar for all of our uh, online databases. So Oxford Scholarship Online is the place where we publish all of our monographs. Uh, you can search just that monograph database, but there's this an underbar so that you could also search across Oxford's publishing from within that um, particular product. You wouldn't have to step out into another one. Uh, one of the, um, uh, given the theme of today's talk, it's worth noting that uh, these Chain, these um, benefits for discoverability are on top of and above the existing SEO strategies for our current products. And so uh, the journals program has uh, all sorts of methods to allow for our journal content to show up in search results. Those methods uh, still stand and will still be useful, but this is another layer on top of that which we think will bring in more use to our uh, and more discoverability of our sites. Um, these being discoverable on the free web is an, is, uh, an important driver and, and uh, kicking up usage is an important part of this project, but uh, the primary um, uh, uh, reason that we embarked on this in the first place was to create better visibility within library uh, collections themselves. Library customers have been asking us for a long time to supply data um, about our publications so they can be, those publications can be set up accurately in um, uh, catalog systems and through um, external discovery services and indexes, but we had been uh, wary about delivering that data because uh, we knew it was a mess or we didn't know exactly what we had, and so um, uh, we wanted to be able to, to deliver a systematic, organized set of data, and so that was one of the main drivers, and then once we started to do that systemization, we saw all sorts of other benefits. and. Um, those other benefits are what I'm uh, talking about here. The site itself, Oxford Index, is also fully integrated into um, uh, library systems, and so we can channel users uh, in the, the correct IP address into a library's collection. It will, uh, we can filter so that those users will see what's available um, within their host library. We have a widget that we supply to libraries so that um, to offer patrons the ability to search through um, Oxford's uh, content. Another point to make, uh, on top of these more straightforward benefits, it's um, the process of creating this metadata hub of organizing what we've had has um, changed our perspective on the kind of publishing we do and what we need to, uh, the kinds of activities we need to do to make that publishing more 
um, discoverable. And so, for one thing, it's provided a clear understanding of what we have, which we didn't, uh, which is valuable in and of itself. And it's, uh, we didn't even know that we didn't know this until we started on the project. We just had a sort of suspicion about it. Um, we've done the work of creating us a, a consistent method of describing our data. And as uh, uh, metadata standards evolve, now that we have this consistent description, we'll be able to um, make enhancements in a more uniform way. Um, we are able to contemplate new sorts of business models we hadn't thought about in the past um, because we can apply them to across, uh, apply them across our products. What's interesting for me is that uh, the Oxford Index also gives us a way to understand research journeys, not only within uh, our um, uh, a particular database, the Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, or uh, our journals, but it helps us see the, uh, the user journey, the research journey across all of our publishing, which then feeds back into uh, our thinking about editorial development, our user interfaces on those sites and just makes us more um, uh, have a better understanding of what we ought to be doing to serve the needs of our um, our users primarily, but also our authors who have we have a responsibility to disseminate their scholarship as widely as we uh, can. Those question marks are not because I couldn't figure out there um, that bullet. I just was putting them there to say there are other possibilities. <laughs> it occurred to me this morning I should change that, I just, uh, but I left it in there. Um, uh, some challenges for building the Oxford Index. Uh, the first challenge, I mean, there were. I, I would break these challenges into two different types: the expected challenges, and then the um, uh, the challenges we ran into, which uh, we hadn't planned for in advance. The first, most expected challenge was that uh, uh, we knew we were going to give title level information. That was the easy part, but the challenge is getting in underneath that to each one of our uh, chapters, each of those reference entries, all of those specific pieces. Uh, and that's a lot of data. And so currently the Oxford Index has uh, 1.2 million items in it. It will soon have 3 million of these items. Um, it's worth saying that this number, uh, while large in itself and um, in, in uh, any set of anything that's 3 million, has 3 million items, is very complex. This is a relatively small number of items compared to the task of creating a um, uh, a library catalog or the Thompson uh, citation indexes or um, or even some of the larger STM uh, uh, metadata hubs through maybe Cybers or something like that. Um, but uh, while the scale of our project was not unique, um, the breadth of it is unique. OUP has a long history of being a uh, humanities publisher, but we've also published into the sciences, and so we had to come up with a consistent description of our data, which could span um, across all sorts of types of content from a life science journal article to books, chapters, to loads of reference content. That reference content in and of itself is very complex from a 30-word uh, definition type entry to a 10,000 word encyclopedia entry, quotations, uh, timelines. We uh, needed to be able to accommodate the commentary and scholarly editions. Uh, finding one way to describe all of that, a interface with all that um, great variety of content has been uh, an immense challenge um, uh, for us, but uh, the work of trying to figure out how to describe this consistently, consistently has been very rewarding for us and also um, will help us in the next stage but evolution of our publishing and our uh, digital platforms. Some unexpected challenges. I mean, I, I, I guess we should have known this before, but uh, there was really no way of seeing what we had until we started digging into the data itself. And any pool this large, there are bound to be surprises. Um, uh, some of the data we thought would be straightforward proved much more complex than we expected. And one of the unique things about OUP, and maybe this is not unique, but our digital publishing has been evolving over uh, more than a decade, and so uh, and we've been creating these various separate uh, online products. Each of those have their own data structure that was devised independently at different times to solve very specific issues. And while there was some editorial coordination across the various um, 
digital products or uh, databases that we offer, there was very little um, data coordination. And so uh, we uncovered all sorts of things in the data that just uh, we didn't know what to make of. And we knew that they were workarounds for a specific time and place. And we had to accommodate that. It's very difficult uh, uh, challenge to overcome. Uh, the other challenge has been it has to do with the Oxford Index serving as a sort of virtual um, platform that leads into the full text content. It sits on top of the actual content that we have in the monographs or the journals, whatever it is, and just guides uh, users into that content. But it doesn't actually, it's just a skin on top of what we're doing and it doesn't actually contain the full text. And so in order for that to function, we, we discovered all sorts of issues like, for instance, we don't have a single access control system for all of our uh, online products and we needed a smooth, seamless way to drive people through various different access control systems without knowing that that's what was happening. And so we created some uh, workarounds to do that. Um, uh, but again, this was led to some very important uh, lessons for us to, to learn from. It, one of the things that we want to do after this is have a single full text platform and uh, the index is served as a sort of pilot to understand issues around what does the metadata need to look like on a single platform? What does the user interface need to look like? What would a single access control system uh, need to look like? And so um, challenges, but uh, necessary ones that we'd have to face in the uh, evolution of our digital publishing anyway, and so good to have cut our teeth on it from the Oxford Index. Um, uh, I just wanted to make one more central point, which um, other people looking at this project would have, uh, there are different aspects of it uh, within OEP that they would find interesting. For me, what's uh, most interesting about this is uh, once we maxed out um, the uh, SEO for individual products or sites. So for instance, in my domain, we publish um, uh, Oxford Biblical Studies online, a sort of research center for um, studying the biblical world and the, uh, uh, the language of the Bible. Uh, once we maxed out the SEO for that site, we just, that was the end. And what the Oxford Index provides for us is additional ways to bring people into that publishing. And that's really uh, exciting for us because once we tether together all of our sites, we are find a new um, uh, ability to increase our discoverability and usage. And the other piece of this, which is very, uh, I've mentioned before, but I just, I just find so interesting is when we see these uh, user journeys across products, across different content types and such a wide variety of content types, we are understanding uh, getting a much richer picture of how be, uh, research behaviors are taking place online. And we need to understand that in order to be effective in our mission as a publisher, again, disseminating scholarship, but also supporting scholarship as it takes place. And if we continue to publish to a straight digital paradigm without thinking about how um, the content we publish or the, the way of delivering it needs to change for a digital paradigm, we will be uh, less useful in that mission of, of supporting scholarship and research. And so the OI is providing a good picture of that. Um, I've been trying to speak quickly, so I wouldn't run over. I, I can just a little clock here, run over. Thank you very much for your patience and um, uh, look forward to any questions.